Hi, George here. And today let's take a look at doing a shallow depth of field effect. And that's this look right here. Let's take a look at a photograph that has this in there naturally. And that's right over here. There we go. And you can see how things that are in the foreground are sharply in focus. Things just behind are still pretty good focus. But the further away you get, the softer the focus gets until it's really soft in the background back in there. It's a special technique that uses a wide open aperture on your camera low light levels so it looks good this also looks to me like it has some fill lighting on the left hand side maybe a big reflector over here or something but it gives you that real nice effect that focuses your attention on the foreground subject so over here this is just a regular photograph has a little bit of that happening in there naturally a lot of photographs will get this just because lenses aren't perfect and things tend to go out of focus the further away they are from your focus point but we want to exaggerate that to give us that shallow depth of field look right here and if you're a member of my channel, you'll have access to the download link for this picture. You'll also have the working file over here, right-hand side, and a step-by-step -step instruction for that. If you aren't a member and you want to find out more about that, I'll explain that at the end of this video. And then to start off here, let's just get rid of these two, delete both of those. And we're back to just the regular photograph. Now, this technique works out very well if you have a really good foreground to background and you have things you can compare the focus on, like we have right here. If the background was just solid, just one layer back there, we did a soft focus, it would look very nice, but it wouldn't give you that effect where your focus changes. You have to have things in the foreground that are sharper and things that are further away that are less sharp. So this kind of an image here works out very well for this technique. Now to make this work, we need two more layers over here. Let's right click and duplicate layer, choose okay. This is gonna be our blur layer. Just double click on the name, and then you can then type over that. Let's do one more, right click, duplicate that layer. And this would be our subject layer. There we go. I'm going to hide both of these layers just for a minute. And the first job here is to select out the subject and remove the background from the subject. Now, if you're using a more modern version of Elements, a newer version, all you have to do is go up here to Select, come down to Subject, and this should take care of that for you. There we go. It comes in with the Selection Brush tool and the mask. We don't want that. Just switch the tool over here to something else, like the Quick Selection. And there is our selection with our subject. If I now go up here, and click on this button. This is the Add Layer Mask button. That then creates a layer mask which hides the background for us. So there we go. There is the foreground separated out from the background. Bring my background back in again. Looks just like that. Now if you don't have Subject Select, then you can come in here and make a selection using any tool that you like. We do a real fast one here for you. I'm going to get rid of this layer mask. There we are. We're back to this again. And just grab our standard lasso tool right down here. And let's just make a quick selection right around here. I want to be up near the subject but not going over into the subject it doesn't have to be super super tight as you can see here just pretty close if the image goes off of the picture just go outside like that and then we'll give you a nice clean line along that edge work up around here and up along this side over here and up around the top now if you want a real careful selection on this i'd use the polygonal lasso tool instead it's much easier for a careful selection and this one i'm not going to bother with that Click on Refine Edge, size is set at 35, that's the default. I'll leave all of these alone. In most cases, that's fine. And then just come in here and brush right over that area there between the subject and the background. And I'm using up here the overlay mode. That gives that kind of a red background. Makes it very easy. And just brush along and do these little shorter strokes like this. And then let elements come in and find that edge and a little more. It's just, I found that tends to work better in here with elements. And come around to this side over here, finish up right here, and then output this to selection, choose OK. There's our selection again. And the same thing, hit that add layer mask button, and there's our selection, and there it is with a clean background. Now, using this technique, you get a little bit of this soft edge in here which helps to blend this in with the layers in behind. When you're doing this kind of a trick where you're using the exact same background, having that soft edge there is perfectly fine, so no problem at all. Okay, here's our background layer. Let's now come down to the blur layer. Let's blur this out. And for that, I'll go up here to the filter menu, come down to blur and the Gaussian blur. And when I was playing around with this earlier, I found that 15 looks pretty good. If I go much higher than that, it's too much. If I'm down here, it's not enough. But I found at 15 or around 15 works out very well for this particular image. What I'm looking at is the stuff back up in here. That's the blur that I care about. I want that blurred enough so you still kind of see what it is, but not really. And 15 looks good. 
Now we need to get rid of that blur down here, but keep the blur up at the top. And it's actually very easy to do using a layer mask. Let's put a layer mask on this, click the layer mask button. There we go. Notice how when you make a new layer mask, you get a light blue outline like that. So that's selected. Now go over here to our colors. It should be black in front, white in back. If what you're seeing is this, just click that little arrow right there. Puts black in front. Go up here to the gradient tool. Click on the gradient icon down here and choose the third one over. This is a black to white. And then choose OK. And you want this on linear, which is your left side option right there. And then come down here. If you come just off the edge, you might just see the cursor like that. Go into the picture, you'll see the cross here, then come back out again. You can then come right down here. It doesn't matter where you are on the bottom on this one. You want to see that cursor just outside. Hold the Shift key down. Just make a dry perfectly vertical straight line. So Shift key down, pull straight up and pull it up about two thirds of the way. It's about where her head is and let go. And there we go. What that does is it hides the bottom of this blur layer and shows the original focus layer in behind. And then that gradient allows it to just kind of blend in with that background layer. And it's that easy to do. Now, of course, you do want to put in some basic adjustments in here. I'll go to the top layer, go up here to layer, and then a new adjustment layer and levels. Don't check that checkbox. I want this to apply to everything. Choose OK. I'm just going to boost the contrast a little bit here by pulling the left side in just a little bit to darken the darks in. About there. Pull the right side in a bit to brighten the lights up. There we go. I think that's better. Don't go too far or it begins looking very weird. Just bring it in just enough. And here's before and after. It just adds a bit of sparkle to the image. Close that down. And there we go. Very easy to do project, but very useful on this kind of a photograph to help to center your attention on your foreground subject. And if you want to get the downloads for this project, they're included with a membership. And right now, the way you get a membership is to get my HTG Photo Coach program that comes with a lifetime membership to the channel. And that program alone is worth having. It's a phenomenal program for working with Photoshop Elements. It answers all those little questions you have when you're working in Photoshop Elements, things you want to know about, you want a bit more detail. And I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. Again, if you get that HTG Photo Coach, you automatically get a lifetime membership to the channel as well. And all the downloads for this project, which includes the picture, this Photoshop file right hand side, and also a written step by step list on how to do this project. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications of my new videos. I'm doing new videos all the time, so you don't want to miss out any of those. And I'll see you next time.